the Varna man and the wealthiest grave from 7,000 years ago. This is from the 5th millennium BC. This would put it at the time before the Great Flood or the Deluge. In the 1970s, archaeologists in Bulgaria stumbled upon a vast Copper Age necropolis from the 5th millennium BC containing the oldest golden artifacts ever discovered near the modern-day city of Varna, but it was not until they reached grave 43 that they realized the real significance of the finding. Inside burial 43, the unearthed remains of a high-status male buried with unfathomable riches. More gold was found within this burial than the entire rest of the world in that period. And you can see the fact that his teeth are so well-preserved means that he must have been quite young. And uh, the, what really uh, astonishes me is not all this gold that's around him. The fact is that he has this rim uh, of bone ex uh, extruding from his scalp. How, how is that possible? What caused that rim of bone over his scalp like that? Uh, that's a part of his scalp. If you look closely at it, that's part of his scalp. It, this, this is amazing to me. I don't know why that's there. Now, most people have heard of the great civilizations of Mesopotamia, Egypt, the Indus Valley, which are all noted for being the earliest known civilizations to feature urbanization, organized administration, and cultural innovation. But few have heard of the mysterious civilization that emerged on the shores of lakes near the Black Sea some 7,000 years ago. The amazing Varna culture. The Varna culture, as it has come to be known, was not a small and inconsequential society that emerged in a little corner of what would become Bulgaria and disappeared quickly into the pages of history. Rather, it was an amazingly advanced civilization, more ancient than the empires of Mesopotamia and Egypt, and the first known culture to craft golden artifacts. Varna is also now home to the largest known prehistoric necropolis in southeastern Europe, which reflects richness in cultural practices, complex funerary rites, an ancient belief system, and the capacity to produce exquisite and expertly crafted goods. It's become, it's come to be known as the cradle of civilization in Europe. The rise of goldsmithing and wealth. Evidence suggests that it was between 4,600 and 4,200 BC, when goldsmithing first started in Varna, as evidence were evidences, advances were made and craftsmen mastered metallurgy of copper and gold, the inhabitants now had something extremely valuable to trade. Increased contacts with neighbors in both North and South eventually opened up trade relations within the Black Sea and Mediterranean region, which was of great importance for the development of the society. The deep bay, along which the settlements of Varna provided a comfortable harbor for ship sailing, ships sailing across the Black Sea and Varna became a prosperous trading center. Increased trading activity allowed the metallurgists to accumulate wealth and very quickly a societal gap developed with metallurgists at the top, followed by merchants in the middle and farmers making up the lower class. Incredible discoveries made at a nearby cemetery also suggest that Varna had powerful rulers or kings, but we will come back to that. So the foundations had been laid for the emergence of a powerful and flourishing culture whose influence permeated the whole of Europe for thousands of years to come. Discovering the ancient Varna civilization. The first evidence of Varna's ancient civilization came in the form of tools vessels, utensils, and figurines made of stone, flint, bone, and clay. And then an incredible chance discovery came to light that made headlines around the world. In October 1972, excavator operator Rachel Marinov stumbled upon a vast Copper Age necropolis containing the oldest gold artifacts ever discovered. It was to become one of the most important archaeological discoveries ever made in Bulgaria. Extensive excavations were launched under the direction of Mikhail Lazarov, 1972-1976, and Ivan Ivanov, 1972-1991, revealing for the first time the magnificent civilization of Varna. 
More than 300 graves were uncovered in this necropolis, and between them, over 22,000 exquisite artifacts were recovered, including 3,000 plus items made from gold, with a total weight of 13.32 pounds, over 6 kilograms. Other precious relics found within the graves include copper, high quality flint tools, jewelry, shells of Mediterranean mollusks, pottery, obsidian blades, and also beads. An, anal an analysis of the graves reveals that the Varna culture had a highly structured society. Elite members of society were buried in shrouds with gold ornaments sewn into the cloth wrappings, and their graves were laden with treasures, including gold ornaments, heavy copper axes, elegant finery, and richly decorated ceramics, while others had simple burials with few grave goods. Now, the richness of grave 43, these are the images that we have here. While there were many elite burials uncovered, there was one in particular that stood out amongst the rest, grave 43. Inside grave 43, archaeologists uncovered the remains of a high-status male who appears to have been the ruler or leader of some kind. More gold was found within this burial than in the entire rest of the world in that period. The male, who had become known as the Varna Man, was buried with a scepter, a symbol of high rank or spiritual power, and he wore a sheath of solid gold over his penis as well, of all things. The burial is incredibly significant for more than just the grave goods. It's the first known elite man buried in Europe. Prior to this, it was women and children who received the most elaborate bur uh, burials. Now, Maria Gimbutas, a Lithuanian-American archaeologist who was well known for her claims that Neolithic sites across Europe provided evidence for a matriarchal pre-Indo-European society suggests that it was the end of the 5th millennium BC when the transition to male dominance began in Europe. And indeed, in the Varna culture, it was observed that around this time, men started to get a better posthumous treatment. The complex funerary rites in the Varna necropolis the burials in the Varna necropolis have also offered a lot more than the precious artifacts found within them and discoveries relating to social hierarchies. The features of the graves have also provided key insight into the religious beliefs and complete funerary practices of this ancient civilization. It became apparent to researchers that the males and females were laid out in different positions within the graves. Males were laid out on their backs while females were placed in a fetal position. But most surprising of all was the discovery that some graves contained no skeleton at all, and these symbolic graves were the richest in terms of the amount of gold and other treasures found within them. Some of these symbolic graves, or cenotaphs, genotaphos uh, means empty tombs, also contain human-sized masks made of unbaked clay placed in the position where the head would have been. The graves contained the clay masks were also found to contain gold amulets in the shape of women placed in the position where the neck would have been. These amulets associated with pregnancy and childbirth indicate that the burials were meant for females. Further evidence of this is the fact that there were no battle axes found in these cenotaphs, but each of them had a copper pin, a flint knife, and a spindle whorl. The downfall and legacy of the Varna culture By the end of the 5th millennium BC, the once strong and powerful Varna culture began to disintegrate. It has been hypothesized that the downfall of the Varna culture was the result of a combination of factors, including climate change, which turned large areas of arable land into marshes and swamps, as well as the incursion of horse riding warriors from the steppes. Although the Varna civilization did not leave any direct descendants, the members of this ancient culture did leave behind many lasting legacies and set the stage for the emergence of subsequent civilizations throughout Europe. Their skills in metallurgy were unprecedented in Europe and indeed throughout the world, and their society demonstrated many features of a highly advanced and developed civilization. They also developed the societal structure of a centralized authority, a person or institution to monitor and ensure the proper functioning of the society all the fundamental principles of modern society had been found, a model of civilization that we still follow to this day.
This article, Varnaman and the Wealthiest Grave of the 5th Century Millennium, was originally for Ancient Origins, published here under Creative Commons, and this is on Collective Spark by Steve McCalmy. Please leave your comments, and please tell me what you think of this ring around, the bone ring on the, on the scalp of this Varna man is. This is uh, not added to the skull. It's, I, don't know, I don't know how that is possible for the skull to have that... Uh, uh, it, it almost looks uh, as if it was intentional. Uh, it looks as if it's going around the whole skull, above the eye sockets. And if you know whether this, this is, please tell me. And thank you for your support. If you can, please help support my Patreon channel as well. Thank you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.